Hi. In this, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I make my planetary time lapses, such as this one here. The workflow is quite simple. Uh, it involves a lot of batch processing and several programs. The first program that we'll be using is AutoStackIt, and we'll be batch stacking videos in there. And then we'll be doing batch uh, wavelets and registacks. Uh, and then in the third step, we will be doing further processing in programs such as either PixInsight or Photoshop. You can substitute any program that you use that can do batch processing here. Um, this step could be skipped altogether. Uh, and then we assemble the animation in PIP, which is Planetary Image Preprocessor. Um, and that's basically the whole workflow. Uh, so let's get started. So I'm just going to load up AutoStackIt, which is the first program in our workflow. And here we have AutoStackIt 2. The first step is you're just going to hit open um, and then get to the right directory with all your videos. So for this example video, I'm just going to be working on a 74, I think it's roughly 74 videos. And we're just going to open all of them. AutoStackIt's going to freeze and be a bit confused for a second, but it seems it's loaded fairly quickly here. Uh, and there's one thing to note here, it says 1 out of 73 at the bottom right here. And this is going to be a key progress uh, indicator. So just watch out for that. So to begin, you're just going to hit analyze. We're basically just going to process the first video like normal. And what will happen once the first video is finished, it's going to then start uh, working on the subsequent videos automatically. And that's basically how batch stacking is done in order stack it. So I'm just going to jump cut. Alright, so the video is finished analyzing. Uh, I'm just going to then place my alignment point grid here. Uh, I might want to just up that in size. Uh, and then I'm just going to select a frame percentage to stack. I'm happy with 30%, so then I'm just going to hit stack. And away it goes. I'm not going to wait here and show you all of it, but that's basically what you do. You just process the first video like normal, and each subsequent video will be stacked automatically. And you can check your progress using this indicator here. So once the first video is finished, it will say 2 out of 73, and so on. Uh, another consideration you're going to want to make is how long it's going to take to stack all these videos. Um, so for one video, it might only take several minutes, but if you're working with many, many videos, uh, it's obviously going to take a lot longer. Um, in my prior experiences, it's going to take, it can take several hours. Uh, this data set in particular took about 7 hours to stack. So yeah, that's another thing you just want to care for. So once AutoStack is done slaving away, stacking all your videos, you're going to end up with a folder full of these stack images. Um, so what we're going to do now is load up Registacks and batch process all these files. Just load up Registacks. You're going to just select, uh, hit select up there, then navigate to your correct directory and select one of your stack files. And here we are, here's one of our images. And to begin, you're just going to process this image like normal. Uh, this isn't a, uh, a tutorial on how to process your images, it's just merely to show you how I batch process. And so I'm just going to quickly run through the processing of this frame. So I'm just going to hit auto balance, I'm just going to apply the third wave a little bit. I would obviously uh, take a lot more time and care with processing, but for the sake of this example, I'm just going to quickly do it. Okay, so say for example I'm happy with this image, we'll then move on to the batch processing. So to actually do that, you're going to hit Tools and Show Macro Batch Window. And you should have a window looking like this. Uh, if you do not have this Functions window, uh, as you can see here, just close the window, go to Settings, and toggle on this Show Advanced Controls. For some reason, Registax likes to hide these little features behind a toggle. I don't know why. It makes no sense. And yeah. So make sure you have this Functions thing here in the Batch Processing window. So making sure that you have this Functions window here, we can now actually move on to the processing. Uh, to begin, we're just going to add functions to this macro list. And these functions are what we've done to this example or first image here that we loaded up. So if you recall correctly, I did the auto balance first. So we're just going to go to the functions window here, select RGB balance, hit save, click the two arrows, and that puts into the macro list. The next thing I did, I believe, was wavelets. 
So I'm just going to select wavelets here, hit save, click the two arrows, and it puts it into the macro list. Uh, and then I believe I messed around with the histogram. So I'm just going to select the histogram, save, again click the two arrows, and it adds it to our macro list. Um, you want to do it in the exact order that you uh, did it for the first image, and you can also substitute in any other functions that you apply to your image. This is just what I've done for my data. Uh, it may vary and change in order for you. And then you want to actually save your images. So you're going to use this wavelet save function here. And you can select uh, one of three formats here, PNG, FIT, or TIFF. Uh, be aware, if your original images are of the same file format here, uh, Registax will overwrite. So in my case, my stacks were in TIFF, so I'm going to save as PNG. And then I'm going to hit these two arrows, and it puts into our macro list. And then we're just going to hit the Add Files button. Make sure we're in the correct directory. So I'm just going to go to my stack directory. And you may notice that there's no frames here. And that's because it's looking for videos. And that's because Registax is assuming we're going to be stacking our videos in Registax. But we've already done that in order stack it. So a, a neat little trick you can do here is just type asterisk uh, dot tiff or whatever fo file format extension that you have for your stack images. And then you're just going to select all your stack frames like, like so. And apparently I've got 86 here, so I might have selected something else, or whatever. And then we're just going to hit run. And if I just move the batch window over, you can see it go through each frame, uh, process each step, and save it. And you may notice it's actually a couple of bad frames here, and so that's the next step. I'm just going to weed through all the bad frames. So we're just going to cut to that now. So now that we've batch processed all our frames in Registax, the next step is to weed out the bad frames. Uh, I've already actually done that for the starter set, so we'll just kind of look at the bad frames. So this was the first frame of the animation, and it's okay, but I chucked it out because it was kind of bookend, bookended by very bad frames, such as these ones. Uh, so these ones were frames where Jupiter wasn't actually in, in frame, uh, so there's just noise. Uh, this one had some weird stacking artifacts and alignment issues, I'm guessing. Uh, this one is a very low signal-to-noise ratio, Jupiter. And yeah, those are all the bad frames. So I've just put them in this bad frame folder here. Uh, we can then go to our actual uh, good data and just quickly scroll through it. Make sure there's no bad frames. Um, it's basically that simple, just getting getting rid of all the bad frames. You may notice some of your frames might have a slight blue noisy background, and I wouldn't say that's something worthy of uh, ditching that frame. Now you can probably edit that out with just some minor histogram changes. And so now that we have all our good frames selected and chucked out the bad frames, we can move on to the next step, which is just further processing in PixInsight or Photoshop. Now I'm just going to be doing some further processing in PixInsight. This is just to do minor touch-ups really because we lack the tools in Registax. Uh, you can substitute any other program that you want here that can do batch processing, uh, such as Photoshop or whatever. Uh, but I'm just comfortable with PixInsight and this will be quite useful for those who use PixInsight and might not be familiar with things such as image containers or process containers, which allow us to do batch processing. So to begin, we're just going to make a image container. So you just right click the window and click image container. And this will allow us to add a bunch of files and create a small singular object that we can apply processes to and it will apply them to all the images inside that image container. Uh, to begin, we just click add files and select all our images that came out of Registax and then you want to specify an output directory and I'm just going to make a new folder called pi2 and then you're just going to click and drag this bottom arrow here to make an instance of it so once we apply processes to this container 
uh, it's going to output them to the directory specified here. So I can minimize that, put that away. The next thing you're going to want to be opening is a process container. So we're just going to go all processes and click process container. And this is basically the same thing as an image container but for processes. Uh, so we can leave this open here and we'll just add to it while we process an image. One thing I actually forgot to mention is just open up your image container real quick. Select one of the frames and hit this play button. And that will actually open up one of these images that we'll be working on. There's only a couple of processes that I like to use on my images. Uh, and that's all under intensity transformations. Uh, I first like to go through the histogram transformation tool. A local histogram equalization tool. And just a curves transformation. So I'm just going to minimize these. The first thing that we'll be using is the histogram. Just select this live view. Open it up a bit more. And I might just clip the blacks a little more. And apply. Click and drag this bottom arrow of the histogram transformation tool and drop it onto the process container. You can minimize it there. Then I'm just going to use local histogram equalization. Let's say I'm happy with this. Again, I'm going through this quite fast, just rushing it. And then we go into curves. Hit the real time preview. Might want to make a slight adjustment here. I want to make a saturation curve. Uh, we're going to hit apply. Click and drag it and drop it onto the process container. And then for the process container, you're just going to click and drag and drop this new instance on top of our image container. And that's just going to apply all the processes that we've just dropped into this process container into our image container. And I've already done this, so I'm just going to pause and abort. Alright. And so I've actually done this ahead of time. And so now we can just quickly run through our files and get a rough idea for what the animation is going to look like. And none of these images came out atrocious from Pixel Insight. And so now we're going to work uh, assemble our animation in PIP. So now that you've loaded up PIP, we're just going to go to Add Image Files down here, navigate to the correct directory, then select all our files that came out of. Uh, our further processing. So with all the frames added into PIP, we're going to be assuming that they're in the correct order. Uh, in the case of my data set, there they are, but if you do need to shift the order for your frames, you can just select the frames like this and click these arrows to shift the frames. Uh, down here, you're going to want join mode selected and I would leave all these tick boxes unticked. Uh, we're going to go to the input options tab. The default here is fine you shouldn't really have to touch anything here. Uh, under the processing options, only two things are of interest to us. Make sure that you have none selected for the frame stabilization mode. You may think that you want the object slash planetary mode selected, but in my experience it actually worsens your animation. And with the cropping mode, you can crop out the nasty edges that might have happened or might have occurred from auto stack it. Uh, in the case of my data set, it's already been cropped so I do not need to worry about this. Uh, if you are cropping you can use this output frame and you can see maybe where the edge artifacts might be and you can use this ruler which are on the scale of pixels uh, as a guide to what values need, you need to use here. And then the quality options tab is not applicable to us. Uh, the animation options tab is though. We're going to want play all frames in forward order selected uh, you can have them play in reverse order once it's played forward once, and I have that selected. And for videos, you can have 
the sequence repeat multiple times uh, using settings here. And in the case of a GIF, you can have it looping. And yeah, so we're just going to go to the output output options tab. Uh, I have AVI selected here. You could do GIF as well. And yeah, settings I have here are DIB slash raw. And I'm just going to have a frame rate of 24 frames per second. And that's about it for the settings and PIP. So I'm just going to hit do processing. Alright, so once PIP's finished uh, creating the animation, you can hit open up a folder and open the video. And there we go. Here's our animation.